Once upon a time, I'm really happy to announce Lana Pahilia and Sean Maguire. Hello guys, how are you? Thank you so much for joining us in CCXP Worlds and in this now virtual presence, right? We wish we were there in person. Lana, this is the second time in a row, right? Last year was crazy at CCXP. It was fantastic. I really, really wish I could be there in person and feel the Brazilian love in person. Because both of you uh, are really used to going to conventions and talking to the fans and then comes this year. How are you guys dealing with the pandemic? Um, well, we're dealing with it in these ways, which are, you know, virtual uh, Zoom sessions or, um, you know, we found ways to still connect with the fans via Instagram Live. Um, there's been many different ways to connect and, and do these sorts of conventions. Um, and they've been relatively successful. And you, Sean? The same? Um, the same. I mean, the, the, the shame is that uh, we love traveling. Um, we love traveling to all these different countries, especially Brazil. So it's kind of heartbreaking that we missed our, our trips to Europe, to Italy, to France, and Brazil at this time. So we're hoping that this can be a placeholder and we can come join you next year when the world's feeling a lot better. Yeah. And Lana, your Brazilian fans are already missing you since last year's CCXP because how crazy is it for you that you, the connection that you have between your fans that even did, don't speak English? I think um, I've connected with a lot of people that don't speak English. Um, one of them being my grandmother. So I grew up <laughs> with my grandmother who never learned to speak English and only spoke Spanish. I think um, I speak the language of connection and energy. And, um, and that to me is, is everything, is that human connection. You don't have to use words. It can be expressed in different ways. Sure. And Sean, how vocal are your fans on your social media? <laughs> um, I think for both of us, um, we, we seem to, <clears throat> especially Lana, um, and I think my involvement with her character led to this, but um, we seem to have very passionate uh, fans uh, in the positive sense, and sometimes in a smaller sense, we have some that you know, maybe don't like what we're saying or don't like what we're doing or, or just don't like me. Um, but that's okay. You know, you can't please all of the people all of the time. Uh, we just try to, I think for both of us, we try to use our platform the best way we can and do things that we think are making the world a better place. And, you know, once you become a public figure, um, you're always going to have your critics no matter what you do. So it's important to kind of just push that to one side and focus on what we think that we can achieve. And both Lana and I, I think, you know, it's pretty well known that we're quite active in political things and philanthropic things. So I, I, I think that um, we'll just continue going the way we're going. And once upon a time is a show that brought up several questions about diversity. So do you both think this is one of the missions of art? I think diversity is incredibly important to have in, in art. It keeps art more interesting to see uh, different cultures, cultural perspectives. And um, I've been traveling and interested in other cultures since my entire life. <laughs> I, I, uh, so um, I think the world would be very bland without culture. I think that um, it's been a tradition in filmmaking, um, and in storytelling, right the way back from the ancient Greeks, that drama is taught to educate and um, and to become inclusive. And I think if you look at some of the big things that have happened, you know, over the last 50, 60 years, whether it's civil rights, it's been one second, whether, whether it's civil rights, whether it's the H, um, HIV pandemic, whether it's equality for the LGBT community, um, movie making and television making has always been at the forefront of promoting that, um, that evolution and that progress. So I think it's, it's a long-standing tradition in film and television because we can reach so many people um, with the films and the shows that we make that it's important that our message be one of inclusion and one of progression rather than 
staying how we were or staying how things are because we all know no matter which country you're in things can definitely get a lot better certainly at the moment um, so I think entertainment has a huge responsibility in that and has been at the forefront of, of social change for, for many years. Sure. And another point about the show, about Once Upon a Time, was the humanization of the villains, the antagonists. And you think that relationship between the two, the, the two of your characters, uh, Regina and Robin, was very important to do that? This kind of storytelling, especially when you focus on villains, it gives us an opportunity to understand where their their pain derives from and through that pain really at the core of anger is pain so if you dive into that um then you and you as the actor are have the ability and and you know meaning that they're giving you the platform to tell a story a deeper story um of what is happening within this quote-unquote villain underneath you'll really see uh, a person who has either been betrayed or wronged or um, you know, his his is in suffering, and so that's where all this anger comes from. So I never really look at a villain as like this person's just solely mean or you know, or, or born with ill intent. I I think there's a very famous quote that says uh, by Regina actually. She, she she said, "Evil isn't born; it's made," and I truly do believe that. So um, it's, I find it very compelling and interesting when you're able to tell the stories of the why um, this character is this way and how do they become this way rather than just labeling them as bad yeah. or evil. And Sean, about Robin Hood, I think it was the first time that this character had space to be more explored and gained more layers on TV shows. So how did you start for your character? I mean, you know, the first thing is it's what's on the page, not not what your uh, previous thoughts of the iconic character are. It's it's sort of episode by episode they give more depth to the character, and then the actor um, allowed room to play. But I think because I was paired up with Lana, and because of you know the fact that we we just sort of got along and connected quite quickly. When that happens, it gives two actors an opportunity to really explore their chemistry. And um, lucky for us, we we both found that we really enjoyed each other's company, and that's really good for comp uh, really good for the chemistry. And I think uh, the relationship between Robin and Regina was the big growth point. Uh, the 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 way to find more depth in the character was seeing him falling in love again and seeing what love meant to him. And um, I think that's where Robin, uh, this Robin, sort of evolved from sort of previous incarnations. And I want to know, how was your reaction, Lana and Sean, when you first heard about the news of the end of the show? I was quite heartbroken, um, mostly for, you know, it's just not being able to tell the story anymore. And I know that this particular show brought so much joy and brought families together in a way that no other show really has in, in years. Um, you know, that Disney hour Sundays between seven and eight were, um, that, that was a family hour where back in the, I, forgive me if I'm wrong, but like, I feel like it was the fifties. <laughs> yeah, the wonderful world of Disney. It was like the late fifties, yeah. sixties, the wonderful world of Disney. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, and so we filled that slot for, for, you know, six years before they moved us uh, for the seventh season. But it, even when they moved us on this, in the seventh season, I feel like that possibly hurt the show because it was, you know, it was and is such a, is a family uh, driven show. And um, so I was sad for the audience that would miss out on that. And I was also... Um, I, I was glad that I wasn't going to be able to tell the story anymore. Um, I was going to miss the crew and miss the people that I've been working with for so long. But like anything, you know, thing, everything good comes to an end. So, you know, it was time for all of us to move forward and, and create new art. And after so many years on set, how was, to, how was the last day when you said goodbye to the crew, to the cast and everything for both of you? Well, it was heartbreaking. Yeah. I mean, I, Delana was there from the beginning. I kind of came in for a long stint and then I left and then I came back and left and came back. So I think it was tough for, for those guys. But I was heartbroken because I became part of them. They 
it really was and is remains a family and um, as Lana said we you know you don't often feel it when you're making the show but when we've traveled around the world to, to conventions and met so many fans that love the show so much it, it's a real reminder of how important it was and what an escape it was and you know it just gave some it gave a lot of people something to look forward to and it gave them hope so it was sad to see that come to an end but as Lana said you know all shows come to an end all movie series come to an end it, the hope is that we just made something impactful that can still be enjoyed years from now and what do you guys miss the most about the set about the energy about the laughs what can you tell us about it each other i think <laughs> yeah i would say each other and and crew members that we uh, grew fond of and built very personal relationships with you know a lot of the crew had been there since the very beginning so these people you spend more time with them than you do your own family at home and so they are your you know, family away from home. And um, I just spoke to Chris makeup this morning, John, for like an hour on FaceTime. <laughs> and like, you know, I missed her and we wanted to catch up and I wanted to see how she was doing. She wanted to see how I'm doing. I check in with Eduardo Castro. I check in with, you know, Tira, who was our second AD. Um, there are people like, you know, that we stay in touch with still. These people are, um, our good friend and uh, extended family. Was there a final special moment that each of you will treasure forever? Like that last scene, that something that you, you're like thinking, oh, that moment was, is with me forever. There's a lot of things. John, do you want to start? Mm. Oh God, I mean, there, we, we had really the best of times and the worst of times. We had some really blissfully happy moments on set together and then very sad moments, um, especially uh, when I was leaving. I think we both, you know, we felt uh, that it was it was the sad end of a chapter. But like anything that's great in life, there are there are peaks and there are valleys and you kind of have to ride it all. Um, but looking back, you know, I, I, even with all the ups and downs, I wouldn't have changed the thing because the biggest thing is the friendships, you know, just like the show itself, the, the relationships that evolved on screen are also evolved off screen. And, you know, there's so m I've never taken this many friends from one show in my entire life, ever, in 40 odd years of doing it. So in that respect, it, it will always, always have a special place in our hearts, you know. And was there something special that you guys keep from the set, like some souvenir, something for your characters? I kept Colin O'Donoghue. Oh! <laughs> <laughs> I kept Rebecca Mater. Um, I would say, <laughs> and each other, Sean. Um, I would say, um, you know, my scripts. I know that sounds crazy, but I have every single one of my scripts with every single like note that I've ever written and all my journals. And even though that's not like a memento from the show, it's like it, it's my body of work on the show. Um, and, and that's really important to me. I mean, I think, you know, some costumes <laughs> that I, but I don't sit there and pull them out or try them on. I mean, I, I have them. And I'm glad I have them, and I, I have one very special costume of hers uh, that I will wear forever. Um, but uh, really what I take mo more than anything away is, is the wonderful memories. And, and I think that's really, at the end of the day, all you can take with you in life, truly, are memories. And so we have many, many of them, many fond, fond, wonderful memories, and I'm so grateful for those. And if you could, guys could choose a new character to play in an upcoming season of Boston Upon a Time, what would it be? Oh gosh, I don't know. I, um, maybe, maybe one of the newer Disney villains. I definitely, if I was to ever do something like that again, I definitely want to be the bad guy, not the good guy. So whatever the most exciting Disney villains that they've come up with in the next years, I'd I, I, I take a crack at that. <laughs> Mine was so silly. I was like the hairy spaghetti monster. I mean, I, I don't know <laughs> is one, but maybe Disney should create the hairy spaghetti monster, and I would love to play that a role. Hairy, a, ha a hairy spaghetti monster. <laughs> hairy. 
spaghetti There's monster. somebody designing that right now as we speak. <laughs> With the hair yes. and everything. Like, like long hair and maybe possibly a beard or something. <laughs> <laughs> and Lana, what spell would you cast to fix 2020? You know, Lana, oh. I can take this one. Yeah. I can take this one. I know. Well, I'm we, with we, you. We, we can cast it. Together. And, and this Corona, COVID-19, permanently, just literally, I, I know um, John feels the same way. Both of us would want to put an end to this. Right, John? For sure. Please. But I think, we, I, think, I, I think we're getting close now. You know, talking about casting spells, it's not really a spell because it's more democracy, but America cast its spell on November the 3rd and we decided to get rid of a terrible leader who is not helping anybody but himself. And um, that spell's called democracy. And I was very, very excited to be a part of it. So I do think, um, I do think that, you know, often we are only as good as our leaders. And if our leaders fail us, then um, we have chaos. And at the moment, we, we, we have chaos. But I think that the, the clouds are parting and uh, I think that things are going to get better over the next year or so. I think we're going to start, start getting our lives back. Please, God. Yeah, well, I think with this message of hope, I wanted to thank you so much for your virtual presence here at CCXP. Thank you so much, Lana. Thank you so much, Sean. Thank you for having us. Thank you, guys, and I hope Thank you enjoy it. Oh, yeah. Thank you. Can Bezos, thank you to everybody. Thank you. <laughs> Can you give a shout out to your Brazilian fans because they're really hoping for this battle? Yes, we love you, and thank you so much for all the love and support you give to both of us daily. We're eternally thank grateful. You. We really, thank we you. We really appreciate you, and we cannot wait to get back to Brazil and see you all in the flesh. Thank you so much, guys. I hope you enjoy it.